What's up everybody? So today in this video, what I'm going to be going through is creating a job search table in Airtable. Now this is going to help you organize your job search if you're applying to many jobs and you're not sure exactly which one is a good fit or which one you are like where you're at in the process for each one. This is going to help you track that. So if you haven't met me before, I'm the owner of Optimize IS. My name is Ben Green and what we do is we help business owners. We help them optimize Airtable in their businesses and in their life. Uh, so that can go anywhere from using Airtable as a CRM, uh, for exa this example, using it as a job tracker or in your job, like as a project manager, using Asana for project management and syncing it up with Airtable uh, to manage all of that really well. So if you're interested in any services, uh, maybe once you get a job or just using Airtable in your personal life, you can check out the link in the description. You can request a consultation from me or someone on my team. Without further ado, we'll get right in the video now. So this is what it looks like if you just start an Airtable base from scratch. So what I'm just going to go do first is name the base up here. So this is going to be job search. And so you can pick a color. Uh, and I think some of these colors are only available on the pro plan. Uh, I'll pick that one. And then you can also pick an icon for this. So whatever you want to pick the icon for, maybe it's, uh, I don't know, calendar, because it's important to get these on time. Uh, so you can do that. And then now you're in your base and you start off with just one table. Uh, and you start off with just this one view over here. And what a view is, it is you can filter a view, you can sort a view, but it's the same sub, it's the same set of data as the table, just maybe a subset of that data if you're using a filter. But what you're gonna do now is you're gonna change this table name to uh, listings. So these would be like job listings. And this can be really dynamic based on what you need, uh, but I'm gonna give you the fundamentals of what uh, is important to include in here uh, depending on how many jobs you're applying for and if you're applying for jobs at multiple companies the big thing here that I want to um, have is just to keep this all organized and you can also just use this as a kind of like a portfolio to keep your documents organized so I'm going to keep all of this in here so what these are these are fields and so this is how you're gonna be keeping track of and you can add a lot more fields over here so here, the first field, this is the name. So for this, I would call this the job title. Uh, this one is notes. So any notes about like the requirements or anything like that, I would just, whatever you want to put in there, you can keep notes in there. If you have a customized document for them, uh, this great is great for, or this field is great for that. Like if you have a cover letter, or something that you personalize to them, you can drop that in there. That way you keep those organized. Um, another thing over here is the status. So this one comes with three options to start off with, but I'm gonna take these out of here. So for job search, the statuses uh, range anywhere from not applied, applied, denied, and one thing you can do over here is you can change the color. So like red might be denied. Um, some other things, like if you advance after you apply, so maybe a uh, first round interview, second round interview, third round interview. Um, and maybe another one could be the uh, if you're hired. So I would keep all of like something similar to this. You don't want to make it too complicated, but just the general hiring process for any business, uh, I would try to get those in there that we can keep track of where your application's at. So another thing you would want to include in here is, uh, and this, this can be dynamic based on how, if you're applying for many job, like mul multiple jobs at different companies, um, or like more than one job at the same company specifically. So this one can be company. Now, if you're only ever applying to one job at each company, then what I would include here is just a single text, single line text field here. So for example, if I was looking for an uh, engineer and I need like two years of experience, uh, you can also do shift enter and do a new line. And then here, maybe you want to have uh, like some certain skills. So for example, air table skills. Uh, here you can use attachments, uh, status, I haven't applied to them yet. Um, and then the company, maybe that is uh, Microsoft. So 
So that's the basics of what you would include in here, and then you could drop your attachment in there. Uh, another thing that I, another table I would try to include in here is a like portfolio table. So if we had a portfolio, I would maybe just include just to keep your documents organized, um, like a few different types of resumes. So like maybe it's a resume for like if, for different jobs, you're going to want different skills uh, on your resume to prove that experience. So if you have like a, a resume tailored to um, like an engineer versus a resume tailored to like a project manager. So maybe a PM resume. Um, another one could be a like that engineer resume. And you can keep going through here. Another one might be like a cover letter template. That way every time you uh, want to do your cover letter, you have one right here ready to go. Uh, and then over here for statuses, I would like to use the statuses in this table just to manage uh, like if they need improvement. Uh, so if a resume is ready to go and it, like you've walked through it, maybe you've passed it on to a friend uh, or a past colleague, then I would use this status here. So this one I would say needs work. Uh, red, I would say rough draft. So that one like needs a lot of work and then done is just like ready to go. So that's an easy way of just organizing some of your documents. And in here, once you start applying for more jobs, this will get more filled out and you will, you'll be able to keep track of like what the status is of that application at that company. Uh, if you were doing multiple, jo multiple jobs at the same company, what you could do is you could uh, add another table in here. And so instead of this being a single line text, you could link it to a new table. So this new table would be just like it says here, uh, company, and you'll only be linking that to one company. So you don't need any lookup fields in here. Um, that's like the basics of it. If you want to get a little bit more in depth, then what I would start doing is adding people that you've talked to at each company. So if you want to add like a table of contacts, so I would create a contacts table and I would probably delete a few of these fields. Um, oh, I guess real quick, another thing you would probably want to include in here is the uh, URL of the listing so that you can easily find that. Um, but if, you really, if you're really, if you really going deep in here to job searching, that I would include a phone number and uh, just the pivot, like this will be like the name of, of the person at the company. You'll maybe add another field in here that's their role. So if they're like a hiring manager uh, or whatnot. And then lastly, I would include a link just to that company. This way you can keep track of some of the people you've talked to at that company uh, and just like have them on top of your mind. If you're at like a job fair, you can quickly jot down some notes about who they were, what they do, um, add some notes about like things that you had in common. That way maybe you can bring those up in an interview and you don't have to totally rely on your mind for that. If you really want to go another layer deeper and you're really serious about the job search, then what you could include is all of the interactions. So for this, I would do an interaction and this would be like interactions with, with somebody about a, about a job uh, posting. So uh, in here, I would, in, I would probably delete some of this stuff, uh, delete those two fields, and then I would link it up to the contacts because this is, this is important for one listing, you might have many interactions. For one contact, you might have many interactions. But if you wanted to link just listings to contacts, it wouldn't look that pretty and you couldn't really add any notes about each interaction in a nice organized way. So if you want to add this interactions table, I would link to both the listing that you're talking about and also add whoever the contact is that you're talking to. So an example of this, uh, and I would probably maybe in, in here add the, actually maybe we can, uh, yeah, we'll add the date right here. So for example, if you're talking to someone at, at a certain company, so maybe this, is, we have Microsoft here, and this is Adam Green. Uh, his role is the hiring manager. 
and then we link him up to Microsoft. Now what we can do is if we had an interaction with them, uh, I'm going to show you what to do with this field here soon, but we had an interaction with them today and it was about this specific engineer listing and it was with this, this specific contact. So now what I would do is I would change this uh, and this is really getting in the weeds, but um, to a concatenate formula and bring in the date. The date's not going to come in pretty, but I'll recommend a video at the end of this video to go watch a date time format function, uh, which will make this look pretty. So date and then add a space in here. Maybe it's a uh, dash and a space on each side of it. And then also throw in the contact. So, so it'll look something like this. Again, watch the video that I recommend at the end to get that looking pretty and not, not quite that ugly. Uh, but this is like the basics of keeping track of these and then any notes that you had, like in, if you're at like a, the job fair or if you're anywhere else, you can keep those here um, just so you're keeping track of all of these things. Uh, and I would probably move this to the end of this portfolio because it's like, it, I often like keep like the res a resources table or just like a, um, a documents table all the way at the end of the base. So that's the basics of just building out this job search table. Now what I would go do is I would start using this, like put all the jobs you've applied for. Um, if you want to keep track of the companies, you can keep track of the companies, but I would try to keep track of the, the job listings, who you've been talking to, that way you can bring those up in interviews in the future, uh, as well as the interactions with those people at the companies. That way you don't have to totally remember off of your uh, memory. And this is really gonna take it to the next level. Uh, and then start populating this with some of your documents and then if you ever want to apply for a job in the future you know where they are they're all organized in your job search table or maybe like this could be like your portfolio or this could even be like a networking table uh, just so you can keep track of some of these things uh, you could even uh, in the contacts table if you wanted to put like a, a link to their uh, if they have like a url on their company website you could do that uh, but i think this is uh, to not make the job search too complicated this is a good start so as I said, if you want to go learn about that date time format formula, then I would go check out this video right here on the end screen and it'll allow you to make this uh, concatenate formula easier. But this, this basic structure should help you get, apply for more jobs. Uh, you'll, you'll know where your status is at each job, assuming you keep track of them every time you get an email correspondence. Uh, but I really hope this helps you and go check out that video on the end screen. And I hope you enjoyed this video. See you in the next one.